Hello everyone, Will here, creator of Virtue and Insight, and today I have a commentary for you on the historic Charge of the Light Brigade, so let's get to it. The Charge of the Light Brigade was a misunderstood order that led to a foolhardy decision that decimated 600 cavalrymen with heavy casualties and became revered as a heroic charge rather than a rash blunder. On October 25th, 1854, during the Crimean War, at the Battle of Balaclava, Lord Raglan, commander of the British forces, had intended for the Light Brigade to pursue a retreating artillery battery. This order was misunderstood by the commander of the Light Brigade, Lord Cardigan. He understood the order as a frontal assault to be carried out on a different, well-fortified heavy artillery battery. Without hesitation, the valiant Lord Cardigan carried out his suicidal attack on the well-equipped artillery battery. The casualties, as you can imagine, were catastrophic, and the Light Brigade was forced to retreat, and this attack was unsuccessful in every sense of the imagination, except, of course, in the sense of the imagination. Lord Cardigan was quickly deemed to be the hero of Balaclava. In British newspapers, he received a promotion in rank, and even was invited to meet with Queen Victoria and Prince Albert so as to share his heroic tale. The charge of the Light Brigade became an immortalized gesture of bravery and heroism. Poetic consideration was created later that same year of 1854 from notable poet Alfred Lord Tennyson and his poem, The Charge of the Light Brigade, with plenty of memorable lines such as, Forward the Light Brigade, charge for the guns, he said, into the valley of death rode the 600. Theirs not to make reply, theirs not to reason why, theirs but to do and die. When can their glory fade? Oh, the wild charge they made, all the world wondered. Honor the charge they made, honor the Light Brigade, Noble 600. Alongside Tennyson's poem, there has been a movie adaptation of the historical event titled The Charge of the Light Brigade, made in 1968. But for all these inspiring musings, one such footnote to touch on is that of the commander of the heavy cavalry, George Bingham, the Earl of Lucan. His task was to follow and reinforce the initial charge of the Light Brigade, but the two commanders, Lucan of the Heavy Brigade and Carnegie of the Light Brigade, were brothers-in-law who disliked each other. Regardless of this mutual disdain for one another, Lucan was sensible enough to acknowledge the foolishness of this preposterous assault and ordered his Heavy Cavalry Brigade to stand down and not charge in alongside the Light Cavalry Brigade, a decision which was life-saving and career-deterring at the same time. Lord Commander Raglan blamed Lucan for the heavy casualties of the Light Brigade and not moving in to assist them. Lucan was removed from the war in 1855 and required to return to England and answer for his actions, or rather, lack of action. George Bingham Lucan gave a well-thought speech, placing blame on Raglan, who arguably did cause the whole debacle with the misinterpreted order. Anyways, Lucan's speech worked, and Lucan's military career remained intact. He even went on to become a general in 1865, and finally retired in 1877. But despite his sensibility and successful military career, Lucan's actions during the charge at the Light Brigade would forever cast him as a footnote in history, not the header.